everything is the same. I would just like to repeat the need that Lighthouse has for donations. Bible studies are continuing. Uh, Wednesday evenings, we're looking for 10 Episcopalians who love British comedy. We will be getting together, having brown bag dinner. Dinner. <laughs> yeah, brown bag dinner. Uh, bring your own brown bag, your own beverage, and we will watch a couple segments of The Vicar of Dibley. So, if you're inclined to call the office, let them know that you'd like to come. Are there any short announcements? But let us begin. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Kneeling as you are able, let us say together the Decalogue. First 
reading is from Exodus. God spoke all these words to Moses on Mount Sinai. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water, water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the inequity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son, or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male, or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read together Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day he does his tale with another, and one night he parts out.
destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will go forth. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has that God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of, his, of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, called both the Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Just inside our front doors. The 
space, of course, would be much larger than it presently is because it would have to accommodate all the merchandise and the vendors. Now, this wouldn't be a 7-Eleven. It would have all the things we need for a Sunday service and maybe a few other things that would be nice to have. There would be books of common prayer, hymnals, Bibles, and other books for enriching our religious life. There would be Anglican rosaries, religious jewelry, and crosses and pictures that we could place in our homes. During Lent, we've been focusing on how change, or the lack of it, can affect us. Can we even begin to imagine the chaos Jesus created when he chased the business people out of the temple? Not just the confusion and noise created by the animals and people running from the temple, and the physical destruction of the pe business people's selling tables, but the changes that people would now have to make before they could worship at the temple. The worshipers had a convenient opportunity to purchase their sacrificial animals and birds in the temple, and they could change their money into the currency needed for their temple obligations right there on the spot. So now, thanks to Jesus, they will have to take care of those things before they get to the temple. <coughs> Inconvenient for them, but more respectful of God. Jesus is commanding change, change for the better in God's sight. Since the beginning of Lent, we've been focusing our thoughts on change. We've learned that while our culture has changed, the Episcopal Church has not changed much with our culture. We've talked the talk, but we haven't walked the walk. We also learned about the temptation to resist change. And today, we learn about Jesus bringing change to the temple. Let's face it, my friends, we don't like change. And the older we get, the more we don't like it. We enjoy the way we do things. We like that familiarity. We like the status quo. We are creatures of habit. But we must face change and move with it. The challenge that Jesus gives us in today's Gospel is about convenience. The people who were entering the temple to worship did not object to paying higher prices inside the temple for the goods and services they needed. It was more convenient for them. Jesus, however, was outraged that the people placed their own convenience over their respect for the temple and the worship of God that took place in there. Convenience is something that we all understand, something we greatly value. Convenience allows us to manage our time and effort more effectively. But on the other hand, convenience can bring out the selfishness in us. Convenience is usually the real excuse when we don't want to do something. We say something like, I don't have the time. It's out of my way. I'll have to wait too long. It just won't work for me. And the list of excuses keeps growing. Sometimes our selfishness is exhibited in ways we don't do things. If it isn't convenient, we try to avoid doing it. We make excuses for not visiting someone who's sick. We turn down social invitations. We don't participate in family activities. And sometimes, convenience keeps us from attending church. Jesus has told us to set aside our selfishness and to honor what is important, our love for God and for our brothers and sisters. In other words, we need to make some changes. We need to closely examine the place convenience has in our lives.
Does, convenient, co does convenience allow us to more smartly manage our time and effort? Or do we use it as an excuse when we don't want to do something? Well, the answer is yes to both questions, depending upon the situation. But what Jesus is telling us is that we must be aware of what we are doing and saying. We're responsible for our own words and actions and the impact that they have on others. And to understand that impact, we must walk in the shoes of others and understand their feelings. To deny showing our love to someone else because we feel we don't have the time or we don't want to take the time is hurtful and selfish. Surely, those are qualities that Jesus would not endorse. This Lent is the perfect time for us to carefully examine the way our words and actions impact others and our relationship with God. It's the time for deep personal reflection about who we are and how we can live into being the loving children God wants us to be. It's the time for us to stop resisting change for the betterment of our church and our people. It's time to open our hearts and minds and embrace good change. It's time for us to live into our baptismal vows and to live what we say we believe. Change begins with each one of us today. Amen. Just in the RP. 
Bishop of Canterbury, for our presenting Bishop Michael, our diocesan Bishop Bonnie, for Moses, Bishop of the Diocese, Diocese of the Dominican Republic, Elizabeth ELCA, Bishop, presiding Bishop Donald ELCA, Bishop of Southeast Michigan Synod, and Craig Catterley, ELCA, Bishop Northwest Lower Michigan Synod, and for our priest Sharon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace. For Joe, our president, Gretchen, our governor, and for service men and women, Ian Lamadou, Stephen Lamadou, Jim Sands, Kyle Rogowski, Nathan Crimians, Gordon Bagley, Captain John Zimmerman, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially those on our parish cycle of prayer, Jim Carnegie and Carol Sprague, Barbara Cavendish. And grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal those with immediate prayer concerns. Jerry Barlow, Tom Barosky, Steve Brokenshire, Lynn Carlson, Denise, Cindy Foltz, Charles Jackson, Robert Jackson, Mary Jane Kerr, Karen Lawson, Michael Monterosso, Tara Riley, Jim and Sandy Smith, Sue, Vicki Saylor, Bob and Catherine Thatcher, John Thunder, Katie and Tristan Young, and all people fighting COVID-19. We stand and lift up to you those who continue to need your healing mercies with long-term prayer concerns. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Daniel Lozen and all those who have died due to COVID-19, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Take them and remember. 
remembrance that Christ died for you and paid upon him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
ever more. Through Christ our 